Hi everybody, it is Lynn Telfer here in the flesh as you can see. <laughs> now I am going to show you today how to do a app. That's right, how to make an app using Power App. And today it's going to be a simple app that allows us to make a simple lesson plan. Yeah, I know. Pretty boring app in terms of the development, but it is a very simple one that allows you to then go off and make whatever you want. And that's the point. So, I'm going to introduce you now to some friends of mine. These guys here, aren't they cute? These guys are my fictitious class. Now, they are part of my novel I'm writing, and their fictitious school is called the Isaacs Innovation Centre. So, I thought today I would make an app for my school, and it is going to have a basic lesson plan structure. With that, I can use Excel spreadsheet, and Power Apps to make something that is far more, dare I say, powerful <laughs> um, than just using the spreadsheet alone. So let's get right into it, shall we? Okay, so closing. All right. Okay, let's get rid of any advertising. Okay. Okay, so what I've done is I've gone into my Office 365 and I have Power Apps as one of my apps. If you go to here and go to All Apps, you can see everything that is available to you. If Power Apps is not available, it's a matter of your admin people turning it on or off. So, let's assume that you've got it, and if you don't, go see them. All right, so now I've opened up my Power Apps and I'm ready to make a brand new one. I can use many, many different styles. There's even some templates here, but for my example of how to build one, I'm going to be using the blank app. And mine's going to be a template layout rather than a phone. It's easier to show you. And also, that's kind of what I want. So let's just get things ready here. Okay. It says here, welcome to Power App Studio. It's asking you if you want to make a form or a gallery or do an interactive tour. Trust me, the interactive tour is brilliant. But right now, I'm going to skip all that and do it myself. So this screen looks pretty much like PowerPoint. Um, and that kind of helps because down here we've got the screens that you'll see here and these are the workspace and these are the properties for whatever you're working with and here is where you can do coding. So let's get started. <laughs> when I say let's get started, I'm not going to make the app straight away. No, I'm going to make it look pretty first. I, I kind of want this to look really good and if I'm going to make something like this for students to use or as an example for students to learn from, then let's talk about making it user-friendly as well as, you know, functional for a robot. So I'm going to go to insert and I'm going to start by playing around with some of these cool things. Now here you'll see label, button, text, controls, they're cool. Gallery, we'll use that in a minute. Data table forms, a whole lot. And what I want straight away is icons. And as you can see, your app can have all these wonderful icons um, to be put in there, but for now, I'm going to kind of ignore most of them. You guys can have fun with those. I'm going straight down to the most exciting one. Yes, here it is, the rectangle. <laughs> so once it puts a rectangle on, I'm going to make my top bar, which is for my app. There you go. Looks beautiful. Now, every app has an icon. I'm going to put my logo right here, and I've got it prepared earlier. So I'm going to go to media this time and look at all the things you can put in here. Are you kidding? Barcode scanner, video, audio, microphone. No, I'm just going to put an image. There's my image. Pop it there. Select it. Here it comes. It's just done my little hard drive up there. And these are my logos I've got made for my fictitious school. Now I'm going to have a website for the school and I'm going to have a a game for uh, for the book so you know I needed all these extra things 
So what I'm going to do now is just grab the logo itself. Here it is. And I'm going to now play with just putting it in the right spot there. I don't care if I sort of... Yeah, that looks great. And now I'm going to put some text in here in terms of a label. Look at all the different things you can do, even a pen input. I'm going to put label here. A label is just something that will not move. I don't type into when I'm using the app. It's just a normal label. So inside the text I want to put in the name of the school, which is Isaac Innovation Center. There we go. Pretty simple. So that's the text. Now, what I want to do now is just play around with this a little bit. Some of the properties are here and some of the properties are here. So I'm going to start with the color. There we go. I'm just going to make it white so it stands out. The size is here. I'm going to make that 40. Beautiful. Okay. So now that we've got that, I want to put in one more thing just to make it look good. So I'm going to go to media, go to image. Okay. And I'm going to find one more image I've made specially for it, which is this logo here where I've cut off a piece. Just a very quick cut off in, um, Photoshop and there it is. Now what I want to do with this baby is that. That looks cool. It's a little bit too bold. Um, the eye goes straight to it so I want to make it a little bit transparent and the transparency number is 0 to 1 so I'm going to go at 0 0.7. Okay that looks pretty right for me. So there we are. We've got the logo ready, we've got everything ready, and now what we're going to do is have this section here have the list of my lessons that I can then click on and edit or add a new one. So let's start with that, and that is a gallery. It's almost like a, a drop down list that is always drop down. Now you've got horizontal, vertical, flexible height, and blank ones. I prefer this one. And it draws it for me, and I'm just going to move it down a little bit. So you can see there, it's chosen the size, and it's assuming I'm going to have a picture there. I don't. I'm not going to play around with the sizing too much on this particular one, but I am going to get rid of that picture there, because I don't actually have pictures for my lessons. So I'm going to choose over here, uh, title and subtitle. That's all I need. And you can see there it's got all the Latin there, <laughs> as though it's real. So what I need to do now is link that data that I was telling you about. Remember how I was saying that I've got um, an Excel spreadsheet? Well, let's link that. Now I could do it in a couple of ways. I could go to View and Data Sources, or I could just click on my wonderful gallery here and go select Data Source. Either way, it's going to take you to here where it's asking you to make a new connection. All right, so now I've clicked on new connection. These are all the things that you can connect to. Okay, I'm still in the A's. There's the B's. It's ridiculous amount of stuff. Um, see me in a month's time when I've looked at some of these. But yeah, it's it's crazy the data that you can pull. Oh, there's Trello as well. Gee. All right, so I... Super monkey. Ooh, I might be able to use that. So basically, I have totally cheated for this example. I have just put in Dropbox, a simple little Excel spreadsheet. So I'm just going to create a link to that one. There we go. Yes, I'll allow link to that Dropbox. And what it'll do is it's going to find the Excel spread file for me. Okay, I've saved it in the folder called Power Apps and I've called it Learning Experiences. Now what I've done in that Excel spreadsheet is I made a nice little table, I highlighted it, formatted as table and then saved it as the name Learning Experience, which means I could have lots of tables in that one Excel spreadsheet if I wanted. That's the only one I needed. Connect to that. And it should show up as a nice little Dropbox 
link. There it is. And as you can see, it's tried its best to try and work out what kind of data it thinks I want to show here, and it's done a terrible job. <laughs> it kind of guessed. So I'm going to go to edit, and it's got here subtitle two and title two. Don't ask me why they're the one way around. Can you drag them? No, you can't. That's okay. This is the top, that's the bottom. Yeah, that's all I need to know. So this one here is trying to show me the aim of the lesson. Nah. Let's have a look. There's lots of different things here. Um, we can have maybe the learning area as a top and maybe the topic as my subheading. That makes more sense to me. Okay, so now we've got the title and design, the um, making a shared database, perfect. So when I click on my play button here, preview the app, see how it works. Great, nothing happens. <laughs> and we kind of expect that because we haven't told anything to happen. So now I want a new screen that has this information. <coughs> Excuse me, cut. <laughs> oh. Okay. So now what I want to do is have a screen that shows all the information about this particular record, um, all set out nicely, and also allow us to put in new records. Now I'm going to cheat here because, well, look, we've done all the beautiful work, so let's just totally cheat. And I'm going to duplicate this screen. And I really should name things. So I'm just going to rename this thing Detail. Beautiful. And screen one, let's call that title. It's my title screen. Nice. Okay, so now I've got my title screen and my detail screen. My detail screen, I don't really need this gallery anymore. So I'm going to delete that. Beautiful. And also this rectangle, I want to bring it down in size of 0.9. That's better. So now it's a little bit more faded than the, the original in this one. Okay, so what we need now is a beautiful form that shows all the information in existing records. Not too hard at all. It's under the insert again. And this time instead of going to gallery, we're going to go to forms, edit. And it will put in a form and tell us there's no database connected. Cool. Don't care at this point. All I want to do is get this thing resized the way I want, which is about like that. There. I'm going to be putting some buttons in, so I'm going to leave some room at the bottom. So now let's connect this to data. And guess what? We've already got some connections here. Well, there's a lot of them. Um, okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to connect data, we're going to select the data source, learning experience. Voila. Okay, so now what we've got is our data uh, right here, but we've got no fields. So what we're going to do is tell it to show all the fields or the columns that are in the database. Uh, sorry, <laughs> the spreadsheet. Okay, so what it's done is it's worked out all the headings that are in my Excel spreadsheet in the table. And then it hates me because instead of putting them in the order I did, it's put it in alphabetical order. Thank you very much. So what I'm going to do is just select them all because I want to show all of these and I'll add them in. To try and please me, it does this. Voila. It actually puts in the forms with the headings to try and, you know, help me out and work out exactly what I want. But unfortunately, they're still all in the wrong order. But that's okay. It's pretty easy to get these things in the right place. So let me start with the date. I'm going to grab the date and put that up the top. V. So now that's in the right place. So now I'm going to quickly go and put in everything in the right place. Now the learning area is next. So the date, the learning area, the topic, beautiful, 
We've got the aim. We've got curriculum links. Yep. Um, introduction. Development. Assessment and conclusion. Okay, so that's in the order I like for a very basic lesson. Beautiful. I can close that now. Now, as you can see, it has tried to put it into three columns here, which isn't as helpful as it could be because I can't resize any of these. But if we go over here and tell it to put it into 12 columns, voila. Now I can resize because there's actually 12 columns here, not just four, which means if I decide that my topic needs to be bigger, I can click on that and drag it out. Beautiful. Same with my aim, my curriculum links. There we go. Introduction, that's going to be big. My development's going to be big. And my assessment, I'll go to there. And my little conclusion, to there. <laughs> okay, let me just save this as I go. Save. I'm going to call this app um, my ICC lesson experience. <laughs> That's good. I just want to save it in case anything happens because it doesn't automatically save. There we go. Nice. Okay, I don't want to share this app yet at the moment. All right, let's just go back. All right, so now I know it's saved. I'm happy. Everything's good. Phew, there it is there. All right. So there is my wonderful form. Everything's pretty much done to a point. Um, look what happens when I double click this. This is telling me it's a single line. I don't want a single line there, guys. No. What I want there is a multi-line. I could make it a password if I want. Let's see if your passwords. But no, these ones here I want to be multiple line because there's going to be lots of writing. And by the way, this is not how you would set up a full page um, form. You would break it up into screens and you'd use tabs and a whole lot of other things. But in this example, just for this basic one, I'm setting it all up on the one screen just to show you how it's done. So don't scream at me going, oh, that's so horrible to fill in. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> All right, so there we go. Some multiple lines there. Beautiful. Okay, so at the moment it is blank. So not used to us at all. Let's go back and make this thing work. Well, how do you go back? Well, I could just click on that, but yeah, that's boring. Let's instead make this a button that takes us back to where we want to go. And the way we can turn this little image into a button is simply by telling it to do something when it's selected. Now, what we want it to do, we want it to navigate. Now, notice I've typed in Navi and it's already come up with navigate there. Click on that and it puts in this wonderful bracket here so everything's ready. Which screen do we want to navigate to? Well, we want to go to the title, put a comma, and then it says, well, which screen transition? <laughs> <laughs> screen transition do you want to? And I'm just going to use fade. <laughs> That's better. So now it's all good. There, and you can see it. it's happy with that. Now let's just test that. There we go. All right, so that works. <laughs> All right, so I wanted that when you click on this button here, you not only select this particular record, but you go to the next page. So I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to put in a semicolon, which tells it that this is another line of coding I'm putting in. And this now is another navigate. Get the idea, we click on navigate. This time we're going to detail, and this time I'm going to choose cover as my transition because I can. Hit the 
Turn key there and it should be fine. All right. So now if I hit play, let's have a look. Let's choose that one. No item to display. That is not an error. It's because we haven't actually told it to display an item yet. So let's go and look at the items. So this particular form, we know the data source is that learning experience table. But what we haven't told it is what item to show. So the item we want to show is the one in the Zing Gallery one that is selected. Voila. <laughs> so now whatever each one we're selected in Gallery 1 is the one that will show here. And let's test that out. Okay, go back to here. Uh, let's choose the design thinking, making a 3D interactive learning experience. There it is, design with blah, blah, blah. Okay, beautiful. All right, so that's working. So now what I want to do is put in a new button. Okay, so the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to go back to the title and I want to put a new button right here. Now, you've guessed it, you go to insert button. Voila, it puts in a button. I hate the colouring by the way, I'm going to change that colouring to a orange, kind of in fitting with my theme here. There we go. And of course, button is not a great way of describing what this button does. New. Okay, so now I've got a new button. So what do we want it to do? Okay, on select, the first thing I want it to do is to navigate to the next screen. You get the idea now, you like it, you know exactly how to do all this. There you go, you've got to choose that one. And all right, so that's the first thing. Next, I want to make a new form. New form. There's only one form in this whole app, so it's chosen that to give me. There. All right. So now I know that it's going to navigate to the next page and it's going to give me a nice blank form ready to fill in. I hope. <laughs> All right, so let's have a look at that. New. There it is. Okay, so it's all ready to fill in. Is only one problem. There's no save button. So let's go back to the actual thing and I'm going to put in the save button and then I'm going to leave the video there. Um, I'm not going to worry about deleting and editing and all that sort of thing. Editing's easy, it already does it. But I'll leave that one there and um, we'll play around with a few more things later. So the next thing is on detail, let's make that save button. Insert button, there it is, pop it down here, and S-A-V-E, all right, so there it is, saved, nice little button there, try to change the colour, of course I can, why not, I love it, there we go, so there's my save button, and it doesn't do anything yet, so let's give it a little bit of coding, Submit form. Which one? Form one. <laughs> as simple as that. Okay, so now I'm going to submit the form. Let's try this whole app out now and I'll show you how it should work. All right, so I'm going to hit this button here. Do you think I should save first? Save. Yes, save. Saving an app. Saving is good, right? There we go. Right, okay, now now I'm happy. Now I'm happy. I'm not publishing. Whew. Okay. Don't ever do that to me again. Okay, so here we are. All right, so let's test this out if I hit the play button. Okay. So if I click on here, I should be able to see, yep, that's working, hit back. All right, so I can see these. <laughs> and, <laughs> okay, so that's fine. Let's make a new one. All right, so let's make this music um, area and um, studying um, 
back and the beach. Okay, so we're looking at how to modernize back, obviously. <laughs> um, now, I'm going to just turn it to here. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm just going to put in fake data here because that is how I am. I'm not going to waste time. You get the idea when you put in data, it's all good. Uh, I'm going to choose the date, let's just say, well, yeah, it's, it's going to run on Friday, obviously, I'm going to have it already. Okay, hit the save button. Now check this out. See these little matching ads? That is the only thing that tells you it's saved correctly. If you see matching ads, you're right. I know. <laughs> and there you go, it's now added. If I add more, this becomes a scroll bar. And also you can change the size of this so you can, um, you know, fit in a lot more. Right now it's really big size. That's fine. Um, I'll show you where that's done. Okay, so when you click on here, you can see here, here's a sizing. Oh, where is it? Oh, yeah. There it is. So you can play around with the size of it. Let's just make that size 12. Why not? Might as well do it now that I'm here. Um, make that size, size 14. So you can see straight away I've got it a little bit different. I can also resize that. Better. Okay, so you get the idea that everything's resizable, everything's possible. There you go. <laughs> All right, um, I hope you thoroughly enjoyed that as much as I did making it. Um, it's been Absolute pleasure. Well, I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did making it. It's been a pleasure making it. Um, I bet. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. It. So you can see, using Power Apps was pretty easy. Just making an Excel spreadsheet. Make it into a table, linking it in, and it works pretty well. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you have a go at making your own, whether you're making it for your own personal use or you're teaching students how to do it so they can start making things. One of the people at the workshop I ran yesterday decided it'd be really good to make an interactive storyboard game out of it, which I thought would be pretty cool and yeah, might actually try making one in a video one day. Okay, guys, thanks for watching. Um, links below, and I'll see you next time. Bye.